Uh, there's something uh, I want to tell you guys <clears throat> that's really important, is that Milwaukee is the greatest city in, in America. <laughs> if you guys didn't know that. That may get a laugh, but Milwaukee is attracting attention and visitors from near and far. I'm from Wyoming. Los Angeles, California. Homer, Alaska. I'm coming from Europe, Eastern Europe. I'm living in Latvia. Okay, come on in, you guys. They've come to learn about farming, urban farming. From Will Allen, a pioneer of the local food movement and a recipient of the MacArthur Genius Award. It's been a long, surprising journey for Allen. My parents both were involved in sharecropping, and we grew up on a small farm. And that's how I learned how to, a lot of the stuff that I'm passing on to others today. Alan may have learned a lot, but he grew tired of farm chores. When I left the farm at 18, I said, never again will I do this hard work. As a six foot six teenager, he thought basketball would be his ticket out of farm life. I don't know if you all can reach up here and grab some, but if you can, <laughs> we'll let you uh, take some home. So when I went away to college, decided to go to the University of Miami in Florida, where I was the first African-American athlete, I said that I would never go back to farming, and I guess you should never say never. After playing pro ball in Europe, Allen moved to his wife's hometown of Milwaukee. Coming into the city and seeing uh, mostly fast food places and corner stores, many of the grocery stores were pulling out of these neighborhoods. So it left a big void. We're in a food desert here. A food desert is defined by the USDA as an area without ready access to fresh, healthy, and affordable food. Although at one time, Allen managed several neighborhood Kentucky Fried Chicken franchises, he saw that the neighborhood could use better food choices. I think a lot of people from the outside that don't live in those communities would say, get rid of all the fast food stores. If you did that, what would happen? There would be thousands of people without jobs. I don't spend a lot of my time um, degrading fast food places or industrial agriculture. What I want to do is give folks an opportunity for a choice. If anybody wants to try a nasturtium, just grab one and pop it in your mouth. They're delicious. So now Allen offers a healthier choice for the neighborhood at an operation called Growing Power. In 1993, he bought this collection of dilapidated greenhouses on the last property in Milwaukee zoned for agriculture. Let's keep going. <laughs> Located near one of Milwaukee's largest housing projects, Allen's small farm sells produce on site, delivers a weekly bag full of veggies to subscribers, holds farmers markets, and supplies stores and restaurants. Farming in an urban center is a very different operation from a large industrial farm. We have to be able to grow more food on less space. So what we're doing here is demonstrating how you do it. That, to me, is the future. A necessary future, according to Allen, if we are to meet the needs of a growing population. So we're going to have to grow more food for more people, figure that out, and this is one of the ways of doing it. And the first step is the soil. Any farmer will tell you, any sustainable farmer, it's all about the soil. All the soil you see everywhere, we grow from waste. Food waste by the truckful, hauled from groceries and restaurants, with businesses happy to have it taken away. Even a corporate campus offers up its used coffee grounds to feed this enormous composting operation. As long as I have this stuff right here, that's the key. This is the key to scaling up urban agriculture in America. Without compost, without high quality compost, it's not gonna happen. But not all the food that comes from growing power is raised in soil. Beneath these planters are tanks containing thousands of fish. They're being cultivated in an integrated system Allen is helping to innovate, called aquaponics. Uh, these characters in this greenhouse are studying Aquaponics, I think, or they're just sitting around uh, relaxing, one of the two. Aquaponics, it's really a, a, a continuation of what was done years ago in the 70s and beyond, which was referred to as hydroponics, so it's growing plants and water. But traditionally, hydroponics has relied on chemical fertilizer to supply nutrients to the plants. 
That's not needed in growing power's symbiotic system. The fish, through the waste that they produce, that's adding the nutrients. In an aquaponic system, fish are raised in a tank at the lowest level of a multi-tiered setup. Water is pumped from there to upper levels, where it flows continuously, cycling back to the bottom. The fish waste becomes nitrogen for the plants. The plants expel oxygen needed by the fish. Fish is a great protein source and the fact that you can grow a lot of fish on a small footprint. So that's why this is so important. Growing power raises tilapia, a hardy warm water fish native to Africa with a mild taste. They also grow a regional favorite, yellow perch. Yellow perch is the icon of the Friday night fish fry in uh, all the Great Lakes cities. It, uh, it has a great economic uh, potential. It powers the whole idea behind trying to improve economic development in, in areas like the central city or the inner city. Economic development, better nutrition, locally sourced food grown efficiently in an urban center. That's all part of Will Allen's evolving formula for meeting the challenges of a sustainable future. In this tank right here, uh, we're going to be putting eels. So if you come back, uh, oh, they got me. No, there's no eels in there right now. When these students return to learn more, it may be in this planned five-story greenhouse and classroom facility, the next phase of growing power. So if any of you uh, want to make a contribution of $12 million, <laughs> I'll leave me, come and give me a check and I'll put your name on every window and door <laughs> and whatever you want. You know. <laughs> I don't want a penny from you. You'll, you'll give me a penny.